In the Book of Mormon, Samuel the Lamanite prophetically rebuked the people for their pride, greed, priestcrafts, and other sins. In this context, he warned the people that they would be cursed, and their treasures would become slippery. And behold, the time cometh that he curseth your riches, that they become slippery, that ye cannot hold them. Whoso shall hide up treasures in the earth shall find them again no more, because of the great curse of the land. Hundreds of years later, the prophet Mormon recorded a fulfillment of Samuel's prophecy. The inhabitants thereof began to hide up their treasures in the earth, and they became slippery, because the Lord had cursed the land, that they could not hold them, nor retain them again. And it came to pass that there were sorceries and witchcrafts and magics, and the power of the evil one was wrought upon all the face of the land, even unto the fulfilling of all the words of Abinadi, and also Samuel the Lamanite. Although it has been argued that the language and imagery of slippery treasure in the Book of Mormon must be a nod to 19th century treasure digging, there are, in fact, compelling ancient parallels for this language and imagery. Many ancient people shared all or parts of the worldview of Samuel and Mormon. The Romans, for example, believed people could place curses or magical enchantments upon the land or crops of a neighbor. One Egyptian text warns, If riches come to you by thievery, they will not spend the night with you. As soon as day breaks, they will not be in your household. Although their places can be seen, they are not there. Biblical texts also demonstrate this concept of riches becoming a curse against the wicked, and the Nephites were probably aware of these references. Therefore, the ancient worldview of the Nephites accepted the presence of spirits, beings, and forces of nature that influenced the world around them. By saying that their wickedness would bring God's curse upon them, upon their land, and upon their treasures, Samuel hoped that his warning would pierce the hearts of his audience. He wanted his words to ring true so that the people would take them to heart and repent of their wickedness and pride, coming back to their Lord Jesus Christ. And now you know why.